As you're still here, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to install Wireshark in OpenSUSE Linux. So I have it running in a VM currently. I'm just going to pull it into full screen. So what Wireshark basically is, it's a um, a packet analyzer. It's um, it's based off of the old version. It was Etherreal. They changed the name and uh, updated it in the past few years. So basically what a packet analyzer does is it analyzes all the data outgoing and incoming into your computer based on wireless and wired um, currents. So what you're going to see when you open up Wireshark is you're going to see a lot of uh, packets, queries, and different stuff leaving and coming into your computer. What Wireshark enables you to do is to filter these um, incoming and outgoing packets to really see what's going on on your network. It's, uh, it's a great tool for network administrators to see um, what protocols are being utilized and what's happening behind the scenes. So in OpenSUSE we're going to install it using the YAST package manager. This is um, something that Red Hat uses and more importantly OpenSUSE utilizes. So to get to YAST we're going to go to computer under system right here YAST. So we click on YAST. It's going to ask us for our admin password. So we input it. And right now we are at the control center. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scroll down to software management under software right here. Okay, basically it's going to load the configured repositories and check for any updates. Now, once we are here, we have a couple options available, upgrades, and installed. Uh, installed shows you what you already have, but you want to go to available, you want to type in Wireshark. It's going to say there's none available because I actually have both installed. So we're going to go to Wireshark. And it tells me that I have Wireshark and Wireshark Devil installed. So basically for what you're going to want to use and for what you're going to want to do is you're going to just want the Wireshark package. So basically you'll go under Available and search for it and uh, click on it and you'll hit Install instead of Remove. And then you can hit Apply. It'll pop up and it will automatically install it. So once we have installed, we can exit out of this, we're going to go back to computer and we're going to go to more applications. And if we do this, we can see it is under new applications, but in case it isn't, we can go down to internet and you'll see we have it. Type in our admin password because it will access our uh, our hardware. More uh, importantly our ethernet adapter or wireless so basically we're going to want to select the um, ethernet one uh, these other ones are actually from VMware so we're going to select ethernet and it's asking me for my admin password of my Mac alright there we go so right now you can see um, there's very little going on a little TCP things going on you know acknowledgments so what I'm going to do is I actually have oh we have a lot of traffic but what I actually have is a Google browser open I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to try to show you guys the the real power behind what Wireshark is so I'm going to move this here and I'm going to do a DNS query I'm going to Go to honda.com. As you can see, we can stop that. As you can see, we have a bunch of DNS queries here, and you can say you can see that they're querying racing.honda.com, uh, honda.com. You can see um, there's a lot of information being exchanged. And what the DNS is basically doing, it's looking for the name and it's bringing back an IP so we can access the web server, which as you can see, we successfully have. So Wireshark um, can tell you a lot of things that are going on. It can also 
more importantly, show you what protocols are running. Um, you can see if your client is running uh, NetBIOS over TCIP. You can see um, if you're running some local stuff that you don't need to run, and the administrator of the network can then uh, access and make a decision based off of what he sees on what protocols and services to shut down that aren't needed anymore to save bandwidth. So that's basically all I have to show you today. Um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment or let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.